ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದ ಪನಮಹಂ ಸ ಪಡಿರ ಜಕ್ಷಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟೋದ ಸತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತ ವಿನಾಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಶಿರ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಂ ಫಾಂಡಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತ ವಿನಾಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಶಿರ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದ ಪನಮಹಂ ಸ ಪಡಿರ ಚಕ್ಷಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟೋದ ಸತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಶಿರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿನಾಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾರ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವಿಂಡ ಕಿ ಜಯ ನಾಮಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿರಸ್ತಾಕು ಕಿ ಜಯ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಸಖ ಹೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯಾದ್ವೈದ ಧಾತ್ರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೋಳ ಭಕ್ತವಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋ ಗೋಪಿಂದ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕುಂ ರಾಧಕುಂ ಗಿರಿ ಗೋವಧಾಂ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಾಯಾಪು ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಕ್ನಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗಂಗಮಾಯಿ ಚಮೂನ ಮಾಯಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ತುಳಸಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಸಾಮ ವೇದ ಭಕ್ತವಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ನನ್ನ ಬುಕ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಸಂಕೇತಂ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಂ ನ್ಯೂ ತ್ವಾಗದಾಂ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ನಿತಾಯ್ ಗೌಣ ಪ್ರಮಣ ದಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರೋ ಅ ಕ್ರರಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಸಂಭೋರಿ ಬರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅ ಕ್ರರಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಸಂಭೋರಿ ಬರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅ ಕ್ರರಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಸಂಭೋರಿ ಬರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅ ಕ್ರರಿ ಸ್ತ್ರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌಣಾಂಗ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಯ ನನಾಯನ್ನ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನಾರಂಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀನ್ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಾತ್ವಚಾಯುತಿತ್ರೇತ್ ನಾಸ್ತಾಪ್ರಯೇಷು ಅಭಾದ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಗವತ ಸೇವಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿಕಿ ಸೊ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟಲ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸೊ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾನಸ ಶೂದಂ ತ್ರಿವಿತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕ್ಷಣ ಪರಂ ಮನೋ ಯಚೇಜ್ ಜಿತ ಶಾಸೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬೀಜ ಅವಿಸ್ಮರ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾನಸ ಶುಧಂ ತ್ರಿವಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕ್ಷ ರಾಮ ಪರಂ ಮಾನೋ ಯಚೇಚಿತ ಶ್ವಾಸೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬೀಚ ಅವಿ ಅವಿಸ್ಮರ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾನಸ ಶುಧಂ ತ್ರಿವಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕ್ಷರ ಪರಂ ಮನೋ ಯಚೇಚಿತ ಶ್ವಾಸೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬೀಚ ಅವಿಸ್ಮರ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾನಸ ಶುಧಂ ತ್ರಿವಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಕ್ಷರ ಪರಂ ಮನೋ ಯಚಚಿತ ಶ್ವಾಸೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬೀಚ ಅವಿಸ್ಮರ
Avishmaram Madhajish Abhya said, one should practice manasa by the mind, shudam sacred, sacred, sorry, trivrit composed of the three, brahma aksharam, uh, brahma aksharam, transcendent letters, param, the supreme, manaha, Mind, yachet, get under control. Chita shasaha, by regulating the breathing air. Brahma, absolute. Vijam, seed. Avismana, maram, without being forgotten. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada. Translation. After sitting in the above manner, make the mind remember the three transcendental letters, A-U-M, and by regulating the breathing process, control the mind so as not to forget the transcendental sea. Purport. Onkara, or, or the Pranava is the seed of transcendental realization, and it is composed of the three transcendental letters AUM. Sorry? AU. AUMA. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. AUMA. By, by its chanting by the mind in conjunction with the breathing process which is a transcendental but mechanical way of getting into chance as devised by the experience of great mystics, one is able to bring the mind which is materially absorbed under control. This is the way of changing the habit of the mind. The mind is not to be killed. Mind or desire cannot be stopped but to develop a desire to function for spiritual realization. The quality of engagement by the mind has to be changed. The mind is the pivot of the active sense organs, and as such, if the quality of thinking, feeling, and willing is changed, naturally the quality of action by the instru instrumental senses will also change. Onkar is the seed of all transcendental sound, and it is only the transcendental sound which can bring about the desired change of the mind and the senses. Even a mentally deranged man can be cured 
by treatment of transcendental sound. In the Bhagavad Gita, the pranava onkar has been accepted as the direct literal representation of the supreme absolute truth. One who is not able to chant directly the holy name of the Lord, as recommended above, can easily chant the uh, pranava onkara. This onkara is a note of address, such as, Oh my Lord, just as Om Hari, Om means Oh my Lord, the supreme personality of Godhead. As we have experienced before, the Lord's holy name is identical with the Lord himself. So also is Onkara. But persons who are unable to realize the transcendental personal form or name of the Lord on account of their imperfect senses, in other words, the neophytes, are trained to the practice of self-realization by this me mechanical process of regulating the breathing function and simultaneously repeating the pranava, onkar, within the mind. As we have uh, several times expressed, since the transcendental name, form, attributes, pastimes, etc., of the personality of Godhead are impossible to understand with the present material senses. It is necessary that through the mind, the center of sensual activities, such transcendental realization be set, in, be set into motion. The devotees directly fix the mind on the person of the absolute truth, but one who is unable to accommodate such personal features of the absolute is disciplined in impersonality to train the mind to make further progress. Oma Gyana Timinandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Uminitan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapidan Yena Budale Svayanupa Kadamahyan Tadati Svampadantikam Vandehan Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padagamanam Shri Rupans Agrachatam Sa Sagana Lakundatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Narita Shri Vishakam Itam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandu Jagapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namas today Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Rade Vrindava Nishvare Vishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyae Vacha Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vaishwanebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhatra Shri Vasade Gola Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Abhyasem manasa shudam, trivi brahmak sharam param, mano yache chitta shaso, brahma bijam avish maram. Translation again. After sitting in the above manner, make the mind Remember the three transcendental letter. Are you? What? What's it again? Auma. Yeah, Auma. Yes. And by regulating the breathing process, control the mind so as not to forget the transcendental seed. So here, Shirasuka Dev Goswami is continue speak to uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit. So, in the previous verse, actually, uh, you know, Rabindranath Prabhu, he was giving uh, his, he has spoken this previous verse. We can see, in the previous verse, uh, Sukadeva Goswami, he was telling Parishit Maharaj that one should leave home and practice self-control in a sacred place 
and he should bathe regularly and sit down in a naughty place, duly uh, sanctified. That's why in today's verse, Shri Asukato Goswami, he, he, he was continued telling Parishit Maharaj that after sitting in the above manner. Yeah. So in the purport of today's verse, Shri Prabhupada, he's talking about how to bring the mind under the control. Yeah. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna has told us that the nature of the mind is chanchanam. Chanchanam means flickering. Arjuna said, chanchanam hi mana krishna uh, pramati uh, pramati balava dridam tasha uh, tashaham uh, nigraham man matir vayo eva sudukshatam Arjuna said the mind is restless turbulent uh, obs obstinate and very strong O oh, Krishna. So to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the wind. The light is not very strong here. Can you just help me to turn on the light? Thank you for me. So, in the purport to this verse, uh, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, to this Bhagavad Gita verse, Shri Prabhupada, he has explained the relationship of the mind, intelligence, the senses, and the uh, individual soul. Thank you, Prabhu. Actually, I found a uh, picture in the Bhagavad Gita very vivid, vividly described their relationships. Yeah. It is said that the individual soul is the passenger in the car of the material body. And the intelligence is the driver. Mind is the driving instrument, the reins. And the senses are the horses. So that is the uh, their relationship. Usually, we all have experienced, most of the people, they are actually uh, They are all following the dictation of the senses. More in uh, 90, actually 99.9% .9 of the people, they are just following the dictation of the senses. So, if that is the case, uh, then people, they are just mad after, you know, sense gratification. But the problem is, we are not the senses. Yeah. So no matter how much we are trying to satisfy our senses, we can never be. Uh, we can never become satisfied. We just want more and more. It's just like uh, pouring f uh, pouring fuel on the fire. Yeah. The more fuel you are supplying on the fire, the fire, in the beginning, the fire might you know, diminish a little bit, but after a second, the fire will become very st strong. You know. And the more you are supplying the fire, uh, the fire will become 
you know, more and more. That's why, no matter how much we are trying to satisfy sen the senses, the senses will never become satisfied. We want to enjoy more and more. Yeah. And there's no end of it. Yeah. But sometimes, some yogis, they understand, you know, by, uh, by following the dictation of the senses, uh, that will give them problems. So they are trying another way that which, which, which is uh, negation of the sense of the senses. And this way is not working also. Just like there's a great Rishi uh, described in the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, like the Sobari Muni. A great you know, Muni. Sobani Muni, he's such a powerful uh, sage that in order to practice controlling the uh, mind and senses, he was able to meditate underneath Yamuna, the water of Yamuna River. See, when we practice meditation, you have to sit straight like this, and your eye has to be half closed and half open, and focus uh, your eyesight on the two eyebrows, in between two eyebrows. Your eye cannot open too much, because if you are open too much, then you will be allured by the object of the senses in front of you. And also, you cannot completely close your eyes, because otherwise you will fall asleep, right? So you have to half close your eyes and just see in between two eyebrows. But one day when Sobari Muni was meditate uh, under the water of Yamuna, he, he opened his eyes a little bit wider <clears throat> than usual, and he saw two fish in front of him is having sex. And because in his mind, this kind of uh, sex pressure is already there in his mind, so immediately, you know, he cannot continue his meditation. So immediately he came out of the water and asked the king, to give one of his daughter as his wife. Yeah. The king of Mathura then gave him all his 50 daughters as his wife. Yeah. Of course, in the beginning, nobody wants to marry, marry him because he has practiced underneath Yamuna River for so long and he, looked, he has very long hair, you know, skinny, you know, very, looked very, very ugly. But by his mystic power, he transformed himself into a very young, handsome man. And then all the uh, 50 you know, princesses all desired to marry him. So, artificially trying to control the senses, exactly, you know, will not work. Because the senses, uh, naturally want some enjoyment. Yeah. Our eye want to see some beautiful thing. Yeah, our ear wants to hear some uh, melodious sound. Our tongue wants to taste uh, delicious foodstuffs, yeah. Our hand won't like to touch very uh, soft things. That's the 
nature of the senses. But in our Krishna consciousness, the beauty of our Krishna consciousness is that we do not try to ne uh, negate uh, the uh, function of the senses, but actually we are trying to give some positive engagement for the senses. Like I have said that the eye wants to see some beautiful thing, so we are engaged our eyes to see the beautiful forms of Radha and Krishna. Yeah. The tongue wants to eat some delicious food, so we are engaged our tongue, you know, to take very delicious, you know, a prasad. And our nose wants to smell some fragrant smell, so we are engaged our uh, nose to smell fragrant incense or flowers offered at the lotus feet of the Lord. So in this way, in our Krishna consciousness, actually all our senses can be uh, positively engaged. Yeah. In the Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> following Arjuna's questions, because Arjuna was saying it's very difficult to control the mind than controlling the wind. And then Krishna explaining to him how to control you know, the mind. Krishna gives some solution. Krishna said here, Sri Bhagavan Vacha Ashan Shayam Mahabaho Mano Dunin Gaham Chalam Abhyasena Tu Konteya Vairagyana Chagriyate. Krishna said, O mighty arm, son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. Shira Prabhupada wrote very nice uh, purport to these words. Prabhupada he said, the difficulty of controlling the obstinate mind as expressed by Arjun is accepted by the personality of Godhead, but at the same time, he suggests that by practice and detachment, it is possible. What is that practice? In the present age, no one can uh, observe uh, the strict rules and regulations of placing one's, oneself in a sacred place focusing the mind on the super soul. In the, it reminds me of uh, uh, one great devotee uh, under the uh, instruction of uh, Nad Muni, Jua Maharaj, he went to the forest, uh, Madhuvam in Vrindavan. He practiced very severe austerities. Like, in the first months, he, he just eat uh, whatever uh, fruits in the forest every three days in order to uh, control the senses and the mind, and focus, meditate on the super soul within. The many, uh, many things like that. And in the second month, he just, you know, uh, take whatever dried leaves every six days like that. And in the third month, 
he only breathes the air every nine days. You know, practically stopped eating any solid food. And in this way, you know, he fully controlled his senses and the mind, focusing on the super soul. Yeah, but like Sri Prabhupada, he was saying here, in the present age, nobody can do like that. So what can we do nowadays? So Shri Prabhupada, he was continue explaining here that by, by the practice of Krishna consciousness, however, one engaged in nine types of devotional service of, to the Lord, the first and the foremost of such devotional engagement is hearing about Krishna. This is a very uh, powerful transcendental method for purging the mind of all misgivings. The more one hears about Krishna, yeah, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind away from Krishna. By detaching the mind from activities uh, not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn vairagya. Vairagya means detachment from matter and engage of the mind in spirit. Yeah. Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. So impersonal spiritual detachment, just like what Sobari Muni he was doing, yeah, it's a kind of impersonal, you know, detachment. So that won't work. That's why probably he was saying here, impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. So this is practical because by hearing about Krishna, one becomes automatically attached to the Supreme Spirit. This attachment is called uh, parasham, parashanu bhuti, uh, spiritual satisfaction. It is just like feeling of satisfaction a hungry man has for very morsel of food he eats. The more one eats while hungry, the more one feels satisfaction and strength. Similarly, by discharge, by discharge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objectives. So in the beginning, this might be, uh, we, might, we might feel very uh, difficult or pain to do that. Just like a person who had jaundice, this disease. The cure for this jaundice disease is to take the uh, rock candy. Yeah, rock candy is very sweet, but because uh, the person who has this jaundice disease, because of disease, so even sweet candy tastes bitter for him. But the cure for this jaundice disease is to continue uh, take this rock candy, even if in the beginning it tastes bitter. As the uh, disease gets cured, then he can taste more and more the sweetness of the lock candy. So similarly, in the beginning, to control the senses for us, uh, detach for, to detach our senses from the uh, sense object, 
looks like bitter for us, difficult for us. But if we, you know, continue engage our senses in the service of the Lord, then slowly, slowly, you know, we are we are going to have some taste about this uh, devotional service. Shri Prabhupada continues similarly by discharge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objectives. It is something like curing a disease by expert treatment and appropriate diet. Hearing of the transcendental activities of Lord Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mind, for the mad mind. And eating the foodstuff offered to Krishna is the appropriate diet for the suffering patient. This treatment is the process of Krishna consciousness. So that's why I like this, you know, Krishna consciousness movement. Because in our Krishna conscious practice, all our senses can be, act, can be actively engaged in the service of Krishna. And in this way, you know, we can our heart and soul can be fully satisfied. So I will stop here. Are there any questions and comments? Okay. Thank you so much for the uh, for coming to the class. Gantraj Fima Bhagavatam ki jai. Shira Prabhupada ki jai. Gola Bhaktavinda ki jai. I hope everything is all right. Thank you.